Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about how to study for the NCLEX exam. So first what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are prepping for this exam in advance. You don't want to start prepping for this big exam a week or two weeks or even a month before the day you actually take it. And the great thing about being in nursing school is that whenever you are prepping for the NCLEX exam, in a sense you're prepping for nursing school because they really play off of each other. And for me what I did is I really started buckling down studying about six months before I actually took the test. I set a goal and I said, okay, whenever Christmas break gets here, because I was gonna graduate that May, I'm gonna start really studying. So during that Christmas break, I started studying and every week I would have the study plan that I followed and I would prep for the exam and then I took it in June and I passed my first try. So whenever you go to start studying, you wanna make sure that you develop an individualized study plan that targets your weaknesses. And one thing about nursing school is that you have to take proficiency exams throughout the semester and you know I hated taking those but in the end they are really helpful because after you take them you get a printout that reflects your weaknesses so what you want to do is you want to look at those weak areas and you want to develop your plan based on those areas so you can target that content whenever you're taking practice questions now let's say you went to a nursing school that didn't really require the proficiency exams or they didn't give you a printout that told you your weaknesses how can you determine Determine what your weak areas are. Well, look back at your nursing school classes. Which ones did you struggle in? Did you get the lowest grades? That gives you a little hint right there. Also, you can access some review companies like Saunders Comprehensive NCLEX Review Guide. It has software that you can use to actually take a mock NCLEX exam and it will tell you your weak areas. So what you can do is look at that and then tailor your plan to what you need to start studying. Now, after you've identified your weak areas, what you wanna do is you want to practice lots of NCLEX style questions. And I really, really cannot stress this enough. This is something for me that was fundamental in helping me pass that NCLEX exam. And I actually have a log I created that you can see, you can access it in the YouTube description below, where I show what areas I started studying, how many questions I practiced today, and you'll see that I started in December and went all up till the time I tested. So hopefully that can give you an idea and how you should set up your study plan. Now, whenever you do go to practice questions, you wanna make sure that you are using different sources to answer questions because they're gonna give you a variety of different questions to test you with easy questions and hard questions. So use your review guide, make sure you get a review guide that comes with a lot of questions and then access free ones. And on my website, I have a whole bunch of free NCLEX style questions that you can take and help you study. Also, you wanna make sure that you're not practicing just multiple choice questions. You wanna make sure that you're also answering those dreadful select all that apply questions and those drag and drop and all the other types because those are really questions that trip up a lot of students. And I know for me, they took a lot of practice. So you wanna make sure that you're definitely including that in your study plan. Now, whenever you are practicing questions, you wanna make sure that you're going back and reviewing all of those questions and not just looking at that score that you got. So you wanna look at the questions particularly that you guessed on or that you got wrong and go back in your review guide and review that material. So you wanna make sure that whenever you do go practice questions that you're not practicing too many. Like, you know, it sounds great that you practice a thousand questions that day, but in reality, you cannot go back and review a thousand questions worth of material. For me, I would practice anywhere between 50 to 100 questions per day because that gave me a great range of where I could go back and recheck the answers to those questions. For example, let's say that you're practicing pharmacology and you got a question wrong about furosemide and the question was something like this. Patients receiving furosemide, you notice on their EKG that they had an inverted T wave and a prominent U wave. Which lab result below would correlate with this finding? And you got that wrong. The answer was a potassium level of 2.4. Well, whenever you're going back and you're reviewing, the first thing what you wanna do is you wanna look at furosemide. What is this? This is Lasix, that's its brand name. It's a loop diuretic. You wanna look at how loop diuretics work. Whenever they're working on the nephron to help diurese, which means remove fluid from the patient, they will drop that potassium level. So the patient in a sense is gonna urinate all their potassium out. So whenever a patient loses too much potassium, it can cause EKG changes and hypokalemia can lead to those rhythm changes. 
You would also want to go back and review your electrolytes and their normal ranges because with potassium, a normal range is about 3.5 to 5.1 milliequivalents per liter. So to really help you answer these NCLEX style questions, you can't just memorize the material. You have to truly understand it. And that requires you to go back and to understand the pathophysiology behind these disease processes and how these medications work that we give the patients. Now practicing questions, like I said, is a great way to prepare for NCLEX, but it's not the only way that you need to study. You need to also use other strategies because if you just keep practicing questions over and over, eventually what's going to happen is you're just going to start memorizing the questions and memorizing the material. And that's not how NCLEX works. It's not really fact-based. They really test your critical thinking skills. So whenever you find yourself practicing really too many questions and you're getting to that point where you're memorizing or you're starting to get fatigued, it's time to change it up a bit. So you want to switch and start watching some lectures on topics that you're really not understanding or hit the books, start looking through the books, reading little review summaries about those topics that you're struggling with. Now, whenever it actually comes to taking the exam, you wanna make sure that you take it relatively close to whenever you graduate. And the reason I say that is because if you let months go by, what's gonna happen is that, you know, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna be burnt out because you just got out of nursing school and who wants to crack a book again? Cause seriously, after NCLEX, you never wanna take another test again. So you wanna make sure that that information that you just learned out of nursing school isn't getting fuzzy. So get it done. After you graduate, try to sign up as soon as you can and knock that test out. And finally, I know that studying for this exam is stressful. You know, if you ever look at those review guides, they're like seriously this thick. And you're like, how am I going to remember all this material for this exam? And the thing is, is that you just went through nursing school and nursing school prepares you for this exam. They focus on what they think is going to be on that exam so you can pass. Because nursing schools are really rated based on their pass rate. So they want you to pass this exam. So go in there confident and, you know, study, but don't absolutely kill yourself with stress and all those like negative thoughts that you can start to have. How well if I fail this, I'm the only person who's gonna fail and all that stuff that you can go there. Just don't do that. But go in there confident and pass this exam because you can do it. And you know what? If you don't pass, guess what? You can take it again. So I hope those tips help you whenever you are prepping for this exam. And I wish you the absolute best. And thank you so much for watching.